Integrating Pathways, Nervous Coordination. So in ancient Greek, Greek people, they believed that the total body is controlled only by brain. So brain is the chief controller. Because any damage to brain leads to malfunctioning of the body parts. So they considered the brain is the main center of control of the body. But they don't know how the communication system is established, how the brain is uh, able to execute its commands or instructions. So that was not known to the people, ancient Greeks. But they know they considered only the brain is the chief center of control of the body. So later, a Greek physiologist, Galen, Greek physiologist Galen, 120 to 280. So this Greek physiologist, he made a noticeable observation, what he observed. He observed one of his patient. He fell from the chariot while traveling. Accidentally, he fell down and he got some hurt to his hand. So what happened to that person? What is that noticeable observation? So that person, he was not able to feel his hand. Feelings are lost. But he is able to move the hand. That means control is there in the hand. So control is there. He is able to hold and lift the things. But he is not sensing. The sensation is lost. So then Galen concluded that the nerves are of two types. They are sensing nerves and executing nerves. What we are calling now as sensory and motor nerves. So the motor nerves, they help in the execution of the instruction of the brain. Sensory nerves, they help in taking the sense, carrying the sense out. So till 18th century, till 18th century, the integrated Functioning of nerves was very uh, less known to the people. So, after this, there was a lot of work on electricity. So, they were conducting, the physicists were conducting experiments on electricity and finding how the electrical impulses are passed. So, all these works, they have given an idea how the nerves are working, how the information, nerve signals are carried in the nerve cells. So, later, now we understood that the nervous system, the coordination of the nervous system the integrated functioning of the nerve cells, how they are connected to the brain and how they established that uh, connection, uh, kind of communication system and how the responses are carried out from the brain. And uh, we know that of, uh, how the responses are created at the spinal cord and in the brain, there are roles and responsibilities of both spinal cord and brain. So only thing we know very little about the functioning of nerve cell. Still, it is to be explored completely, the total working mechanism of a nerve cell. We have learned about that, uh, the detailed uh, structure of the nerve cell also. Now, let us look at the nerve cell, that is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. Let us see the various parts in their functions. So now, the nerve cell is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system. Before we study the functioning of the nerve cell, how the nerve cells or helping in the communication process. Let us understand the structure of the nerve cell. If we observe the permanent slide of a nerve cell, we can identify different parts. A nerve cell has got a cell body. This is the cell body, which is having a prominent nucleus. So every neuron has got a cell body which contains a prominent nucleus. So this cell body, it has got so many fiber-like extensions. We could see some, some fiber-like extensions. Some of these extensions are branched and short. There is one unbranched long extension. So these extensions are of two types. These short extensions are called as dendrites. Dendrites. And the long extension is called as axon. Axon. 
and we can observe one more difference here between the dendrites and axons they are short and branched this is unbranched and very long and it is covered or wrapped by some special sheath called as myelin sheath so the axon is covered wrapped up by myelin sheath which is made up of uh, some fat myelin fat so that this myelin sheath but it is not completely wrapping as a single layer so this myelin sheath is having some gaps it's leaving some gaps here these gaps are called nodes of ranvier nodes of ranvier so the axon it initiated or originated at the cell body and ends at some point where it has some branches where it has some connections so this endings of the axon are called as nerve terminals nerve terminals so these are the nerve terminals and here you find some knob like structures in the nerve terminals called as synaptic knob so these are the major parts of a nerve cell sometimes the some of the axons of the nerve cells are not melanated but in most cases the nerve cells are melanated so this is the basic structure of the nerve cell and we also find some kind of granules inside the cell body of a neuron we call it as nissel granules nissel granules So now let us see the functions of the different parts of this nerve cell how it is establishing communication in the nervous system now let us look at the importance of the nerve cells their location and their functioning so we have around 10 billion nerve cells in our nervous system so in the nerve cells the cell bodies of the nerve cells are located either in the brain or spinal cord spinal cord or close to spinal cord two regions called as ventral and dorsal nerve ganglion or root ganglion so at this places root ganglion at these places we find the cell bodies and it is difficult to identify or find the difference between dendrites and axons in the brain because some of the axons may not be having myelinated sheet So if myelinated sheath is there, myelin sheath is there, then we will be able to identify uh, what is dendrite and what is axon. Sometimes it is difficult to identify. The only thing is uh, length factor. The axons are lengthy compared to the dendrites. So the metabolic activity takes place in the cell body. It is controlled by the nucleus. Then what is the function of the dendrites? Dendrites are the branch or the branched fibers which make connections with the axons or dendrites of the other nerve cell. so dendrites are connected to the other nerve cell either uh, nerve cell either to their axons to make a nerve network so the junction between the dendrites of one axon dendrites of one nerve cell and axon of the other nerve cell you call it as a synapse what is synapse synapse is the junction if this is the nerve cell these are the branches and here you have the branches of another nerve cell the nerve terminals of another nerve cell so they are connected here sometimes it may be connected to the dendrites of other nerve cell so the junctions at which the connection is made the junction is called as synapse so at this synapse the nerve endings or dendrites are not directly connected they are not attached so there is no protoplasmic material to transfer the information there is some gap but in this gap the information is passed either in the form of electric signals or chemical signals so either the chemical or electrical means of communication is done between two nerve cells but the communication is very fast between one nerve cell to another nerve cell we know we see that how fast the responses are created so that information is passed very quickly and the junctions between one nerve cell and another nerve that is a junction called as synapse 
at synapse either chemical or electrical signals or pulses are passed to communicate and these synapses are mostly found in the brain or spinal cord in other parts of the body there is no junctions the other part of the body the axon is running continuously to the end organ to the effector organ now let us see the different types of the nerve cells there are different types of nerve cells in our body mainly there are two different types they are sensory nerves and motor nerves let us see